Today's video blog is about finding the right idea for a business for you to start today. Are you having some trouble knowing what next steps to take to develop and create an idea that is going to encompass your skills, your experience, and something that you truly want to do? Stay tuned. We're going to help you do just that. Escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hi, I'm Lydia Lee, the freedom instigator at Screw the Cubicle. And a primary piece of my work is helping people and guiding them to really develop a business, not only that is profitable, but something that they're going to love doing. Because honestly, the way that you're going to be profitable is if you care about the work that you do and you're going to put in the time, the focus and the commitment to grow that business. So this is the approach I take. And to be honest, what is good work if it's not something that's going to bring you also some personal fulfillment and pleasure? So this video blog was really brought, um, uh, this topic anyway, was really brought to my attention as we started uh, the Academy of Cubicle Crashers about a couple of weeks ago with a brand new intake of students. And this was the first piece of the puzzle that we were tackling together. What business should they be starting? How do they know if they're starting the right business? And really looking at creating that business in a unique way that really uh, is truly com coming from their uh, life experience, their professional skills, uh, and really a deep interest to expand that work into better work in the future, right? Sustainability to be really built into this business. So a lot of the students at the academy, we, you know, when we actually worked it out together uh, in the first couple weeks of developing business ideas together, I really saw some really common issues that were experienced, I think, across the board from anyone that's ever come to me in the last five years of me being uh, the escape Sherpa at Screw the Cubicle. Um, and I think that very likely if you're here today, you too have this really important question for yourself. What business should I start? How do I know it's the right business I should be starting? And how am I going to stop being... Um, distracted by what everyone else is doing out there and really get focused on what I'm designed to do today. So there are three things that I'm going to explain in this video blog and that's going to help you start think, to think about your skills differently, thinking about using what you already have and actually repurposing that to create something bigger for yourself rather than starting from scratch uh, and thinking that you have to emulate anyone else out there. No more of that business pornography, <laughs> of looking out there and thinking about what business you should start, but instead really getting personal and reflective about what you're meant to do today. And hopefully these three steps are going to help you get started. All right, step one or approach number one. Is there a way that you can repurpose your experience to serve a different audience? Now, if you're like me, a lot of you might be somewhat traumatized from working in corporate, working for a bad boss, maybe working for a type of company that you were good at what you did, but didn't enjoy working for those people. Or maybe there was a little bit of a discrepancy in value systems or how you're approaching uh, your role at your old corporate job. Um, now, this is a big mistake that a lot of people make. They sort of say, you know what, I'll never do this thing that I used to do again uh, because I've, it's been so tainted. It's been something that I really didn't enjoy. And sometimes that could be true. But a lot of times I feel that there is a misconception sometimes because we have been tainted by an experience uh, that we didn't like to have in our old corporate job. But actually the skill set itself, the problem that we know how to solve for people is actually something that at some point we were actually truly interested to explore. So this is sort of the first question I like to ask people is, what do you have right now? What can you solve right now? What do you know how to do that you've been validated to do before? You've been paid to do it in a job before. You've received compliments or feedback from uh, friends or family that you've helped in the past. All this is actually great clues to, know, to give you the idea that you are good at that thing. You might need to actually redesign how you offer that thing in order to bring more fun and pleasure and fulfillment into it, but don't disregard the skill sets you already have. Now at the Academy, I know what we did um, as we explored these ideas, a lot of people do have skill sets they came into a corporate job from uh, for and realized that once after they were doing it at that job, they weren't enjoying it anymore. And how do we bring back that passion and that deep interest for it? And a good way to do this is just simply helping a different audience, helping a different industry, helping a different market. Um, the skill sets can remain so, but it can be repurposed. It can be malleable and um, focused onto a different direction to help different people or different causes or different 
outcomes. So, for example, one of our students, Rebecca, who used to work or who is working for the BBC,、uh, she is in charge of really、um, the storyboarding, you know, the production of particular shows. And she goes, "Well, I don't want to maybe work for documentaries again or have my production company." Or do that as a consultant. But what is a big theme for her job is storytelling, the ability to actually bring awesome stories and have people digest it in an entertaining way,、uh, and bring potentially a cause or a topic、uh, to the forefront for people to actually have their attention. Right, focused on that、uh, through a show, for example, at the BBC. Now, how could she take that into a different direction? Now, she could look at interests. For example, that she has in her community, so she's attracted to artists, creatives, musicians, or she feels that maybe artistic people are great at doing the art itself,、um, but she, they don't know how to tell that story. They don't know how to sell their music. They don't know how to use storytelling as a way of building a tribe or a following for their work. I know Rebecca has,、um, you know, friends and has done, for example, festivals and shows for. Uh, artists in the past or creative people, and that may potentially be a way that she may repurpose her storytelling abilities from the BBC into a, a new realm, a new audience, a new cause that she can stand behind. So, a lot of people that can actually bring more life into their skill sets is changing who they help. So, my challenge to you today is instead of disregarding. A lot of skill sets that you have, or allowing the, the the tainting of your skill sets in the past to not dictate your future. How can you change it up? How can you change the cause? How can you use your skills to give a particular audience an outcome that you can believe in? Right, it's something that you can stand behind,、uh, a cause that you、uh, really can say, "I want to lay my body down," right, to be able to help these sorts of people achieve something they couldn't have done without my skill sets. That may be the first place to start. How can you repurpose your skills with a new audience and a new cause that can really help you bring a lot more life to the current skill sets that you have to offer? The second step or approach is to start focusing on choosing. The right piece of the puzzle to solve. Now, what do I mean by this? Now, as new entrepreneurs, it's very tempting to try to do everything. To try to say I am everything for everyone, and that is also a very common mistake that first-time business owners made. I definitely did that when I started my first business.、Um, and so, when you are trying to build a business, it's really, really, really important to really focus on one section of the work that you're trying to do, not to be A one-stop shop or a full case agency for everybody. You can absolutely play in the same industry as a lot of your colleagues that will be,、um, you know, in the same、uh, area of expertise as you will be. But where you're going to shine the most is if you actually choose a stage or a level or a part of the journey for your particular type of customer and master that journey, that piece of the journey, right, and be known for that part. Or that piece of the puzzle, or that stage or level that they're at, so that you can actually build a bigger business around that before you start leveraging、uh, maybe a team, you know, or building a bigger business in the near future to solve more problems on their journey. So choosing that first piece of the puzzle to solve is so much easier than trying to spread yourself out too thin and doing everything. A great example of this is another student in my academy uh, called. Uh, her name is Felicia, and she is sort of like a, a Jill of all trades, right? She's been able to、uh, be a marketing、uh, assistant to multiple types of businesses that do different things, from video production to、uh, marketing stuff to copywriting to this and that and that. And she goes, "Well, I have to do everything to do with marketing with these people," and that's untrue, and that feels overwhelming. So you might feel、um, overwhelmed as well at this point when you are dissecting what it is that you should do in your business. So one of the big advice that myself and the group gave to Felicia last week is to really focus on what she enjoys most, which was ultimately the strategic vision for the direction of where she thinks a business story brand should be in, how someone actually articulates their message,、uh, what sorts of marketing abilities or marketing strategies are actually most most useful. To the mission they want to have, and really working with the visionary to develop that unique visibility vision and yet marketing vision for them. That is actually the work she enjoys the most. It's actually the implementation of those ideas that all of a sudden trumps her. So that was a really big aha moment for Felicia that she doesn't have to do that piece. She can still provide value for her customers in this strategic vision, high level thinking. You know, really painting the plan. 
for this uh, business owner in order to actually charge for that so that it's much of an easier job for this business owner to go out there and find the assets of people or develop uh, their own implementation strategies to roll out that plan on their own, especially if they're solopreneurs and don't have a team. So where Felicia is most valuable at is the vision, the strategy, the extracting what is that brand story from these people and putting it into an executable plan that they can run with. And people absolutely will pay for that. And Felicia feels amazing doing just that piece and be able to think even about the future of her business by outsourcing potentially a done for you package for them. Uh, it could be uh, recruiting team members or consultants or contractors that fit the bill of what needs to be executed for most of her business owners she works with, but still focus on what she does best and hand over that plan to somebody else or build that team that's able to execute it for her under the umbrella of her agency. So starting small, starting with what you can do, starting with the piece of the puzzle that you want to solve can absolutely um, bring more attention to the audience that actually needs that piece the most. And yes, there'll be some convincing that you'll need to do for potential customers to say why this is the piece to start with, but here's what's going to make your life easier if you start here, and here's what I specialize in. So my challenge for you today is if you are somebody that is trying to do all the things, trying to, uh, you know, Get, provide too much of a service to somebody, what is a piece of the puzzle that you can pick? And knowing what puzzle piece to pick is going to be what you personally, intrinsically feel best and most called to serve in this area. And trust that feeling that that part where you have had the most enjoyment, where you've um, foreseen yourself actually providing the most value is the piece you should start with and actually develop the messaging around that of how you can articulate the value of that piece first before you try to put on more things into your offers and actually becoming nobody of value to anyone. Hope that was helpful for you to pick your piece of the puzzle to solve. All right, the third step to be using to define a niche or drill down your niche is to think about tailoring a solution with your unique approach. Now, how many people have you heard from, or maybe it's you that's saying this, of, you know, when you come to a business idea and you go, I think that's the thing I want to do, then you start being uh, distracted by looking out there who else is doing that thing, and you find hundreds, if not thousands of people uh, with similar business ideas, and that sort of trumps you a little bit. It gives you a bit of discouragement, and you might say, oh my God, there's so many other people doing the thing that I'm doing. I might as well not do that and pick something else that's a little bit, uh, you know, the, something that has never been invented before. Now, the truth of the matter is that most of the business that you are going to start, definitely my business as well, um, is a business that has been started by other people. It's an industry uh, that is warm. Uh, there's already other people doing what you're doing. And that is actually a really great sign that there's a market for the type of business that you want to start. That's not a bad thing. Most of us are not starting something that has never been done before. But don't let that deter you from pursuing that path because... The thing that you're going to be doing in your business, even if the outcomes look similar, even if the business type looks similar than someone else's out there, you are really the different piece of the puzzle. You are going to bring in a combination of skill sets, experience, an approach, a perspective that is in that formula and in that combination of how you work with people immediately makes you different. So don't make that mistake of actually not creating it from that that way of doing it and actually giving up on, I, on an idea just because you think everyone else has been doing it uh, or you think that someone needs to look at your business in a particular way. Now, what do I mean by that? A great example of this is um, Heather, who is one of our students at the academy. And one of the things that she was struggling with was um, creating a, a, a business that really utilizes her teaching background um, in academia uh, and using that approach to teach other coaches how to uh, be creating better courses, creating a better learning experience because they don't possess her teaching experience for the last decade. And that is such a great niche because a lot of coaches are going to be teaching what they know and not every coach has, has a teaching background, uh, and understands what it feels like to teach and how to be a great teacher. You know, this could be something that's not a natural ability from coaches. Uh, and one of the things that Heather was struggling with was really, um, really, to be honest, doing the things that she doesn't want to do, which is things like curriculum planning or creating exercises for people or putting agendas together, you know, for coaches that are running retreats. That's the thing she doesn't want to do. But hey, that's a great, re really great clue. What you don't like doing can lead you to obviously what you do like doing, the complete opposite of that. 
And so being able to actually say, hey, I can be a coach for teachers, or sorry, I can be a teaching coach uh, for coaches who want to teach, for example, doesn't have to include the curriculum. It doesn't have to include the agenda planning if that's not what brings her joy. Where she can really focus on is what she likes best, right? Um, and tailoring that approach of saying, actually, you're going to be a better teacher and you're going to actually be able to do your own agenda and your own exercises if I teach you this piece about what is your ingredients as an amazing coach. What is the formula or the pillars or your foundations of the work that you do that can then highlight for you how you can create a learning experience that is truly, truly customized for you and your audience. And that piece is a little bit different than saying, I'm going to create your e-course for you. It's really helping these coaches um, understand, right? What is their secret sauce? What is their approach to teach? How do they like to teach? Um, and really encompassing a learning experience that not only serves their audience, but also serves uh, the pleasure and the fulfillment that this coach is going to have whenever they run a retreat or do a talk or do a workshop. They're really putting their blend of ingredients into that mix and being known for that flavor of delivery of their work. How much better is that? And I think that is so much more of a relief for Heather to actually focus on that piece and actually develop uh, her, her programs and her business around that core problem and articulate that, that problem leads to you doing better things in your learning experience creation than actually say yes to everything that every coach ever wants when it comes to creating their next e-course or workshop. Having these boundaries around your work are going to be really important not just for yourself to feel really satisfied and not overwhelmed in your work, but really sticking out, right, as someone that specializes in that. Know that you don't have to do everything that your clients want you to do, but actually confidently master and put out just that piece and that unique way of an approach or perspective that's actually going to make things even better for your audience, right? But it, cre it, it, it does require you to actually be courageous to speak your voice out to speak your truth about what you're able to do and what you believe is going to be even a better path for your clients instead of them actually telling you what to do. That's what they're hiring you, you for. Um, and I think that ability to be able to stand true to the piece that you want to do and also put your own spin, your own approach of solving that problem that's going to be different from other people is going to allow you to do better work for yourself. Now I want to hear from you. Which of these three steps or approaches helped you to clarify your idea for your niche even further? Where are the areas that you think would actually improve your idea and make things a little bit more simpler for you without overthinking your idea or getting overwhelmed with doing too many things to define your niche, but instead being truthful about where you want to stand with your work, uh, being courageous to actually take that next step to validate your ideas for yourself, start talking to people about this idea, start giving away your gifts and actually experimenting with how you help in your idea, you're really never going to know if the right niche is for you until you actually perform that niche. A lot of people skip this step as well. So I really encourage you, if you want to do the work that you want to do and be paid for it, actually start giving it away today. Not when you think your website should be up or when your branding is looking snazzy. Do it now. Create a container of people, maybe it's two or three people that you can approach and actually give away that talent. And you're going to be so much more uh, clear about what your niche should be and what your business idea should be about and how you really help and how you charge by actually working with real humans. Now, if you're interested to work with us and myself as well to personally help you develop your business, create a great idea that's not only just going to get you paid, but really build something that where uh, work is really redefined for you, your, your expression of purpose is really behind the work that you do, I hope that you click the resource link that we're going to be providing uh, to give you the different ways that you can work with us, whether it's through the Academy of Cubicle Crashers, which is a digital community that runs uh, a few times a year, and we incubate together to really blast you off to a side hustle and a launch of a business that's truly something you can love. Or join us in things like our retreats in Bali, where we do it live and in person uh, and make sure that you are fully, fully focused, well, in paradise, of course, uh, and ensuring that you leave Bali uh, with an amazing business plan, an amazing plan of ac action that you can go home with and know that the business that you're building is truly coming from your value systems and something that's going to be deeply satisfying for you to produce. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's video blog. And as usual, I would love to hear from you of what else do you want to learn so that I can film a video for you and help you uh, towards your path of escaping your nine to five. 
Don't forget to comment below and let us know what you enjoyed most about this video. Share it with your friends and any questions that you have for me that I can answer for you. To your freedom and I'll see you next time. Have you been desiring to create a life and career that gives you the freedom that you deserve, but you're not quite sure where to start? Well, let me be the guide to help you quit that job that's crushing your soul, discover your strengths, and make money doing something that you love and will care about. Head over to screwthecubicle.com to find tools and resources I've created just for you to help you jumpstart your escape plan from your nine to five and launch a business you can run from anywhere.